Hi, I'm Dr. Jonathan Craighead. This is a short video about hip replacement surgery in an outpatient setting. One of the important things during this process is that you identify a family member or friend that will be your support system and coach. This person will come with you on the day of surgery and take you home. They'll also stay with you for a few days afterwards to make sure you're doing okay. We would ask that you have that individual watch this video with you. The most common reason for hip replacement surgery is pain due to severe arthritis. In a normal joint, there's cartilage or cushion that keeps the joint from rubbing bone on bone and prevents pain. In arthritis, that cushion or cartilage is gone. When you have that bone on bone, you then develop pain and stiffness in the joint. You can see on this x-ray of a normal hip that there's space between the ball and socket. Contrast that with this x-ray of an arthritic hip in which you see that space is gone and the ball and socket are rubbing bone on bone, causing severe pain. Now look at this x-ray of a hip after replacement where the ball and socket have been restored and we once again have normal joint alignment. The surgery itself takes about an hour. We do an anterior approach which is beneficial because we're able to go between the muscles instead of cutting the muscles which was done during a traditional approach. This typically leads to a quicker recovery and less pain afterwards. During the surgery we make a small incision over the front of the hip. What we actually do is we remove your arthritic ball and then on your thigh bone we have this metal prosthesis that goes down inside the thigh bone. There's a new ball that we attach to that. On the socket, we ream out your socket and place a metal shell in there with a plastic liner. So now, instead of bone on bone, you have a new ball and socket and it gets rid of the arthritic pain. It's important to have reasonable expectations. While the arthritis pain is immediately gone, you still have soft tissues that can get inflamed and cause some soreness. It is normal to have some swelling and soreness for several weeks after the surgery. This procedure will not make you 18 again, but it should relieve your arthritic pain. If you're allergic to any metal, nickel, or jewelry, we would ask that you contact us immediately so we can make sure that we get the right prosthesis for you. The risk of hip replacement surgery is low. The risk of infection in healthy individuals is less than 1%, and we will give you IV antibiotics during the procedure to help reduce your risk of infection. The risk of blood clots is also less than 1%. If you have a history of blood clots or are at high risk for a blood clot, we will give you a prescription blood thinner for about a month after the surgery. If you do not have any history of blood clots, we will ask that you take a baby aspirin twice a day for about 40 days. The risk of nerve damage down in your foot or ankle is less than 1%. About 15% of the people will get a little numbness near the scar. Typically this resolves, but sometimes it's permanent. It doesn't usually bother people, but we do like for you to know about it ahead of time. The other risk is a fracture or a dislocation. This is extremely rare and can be treated surgically if it does happen. Another risk with hip replacement surgery is the risk of a leg length discrepancy. We take x-rays during the procedure to try and ensure that your legs are exactly the same length. Occasionally people have scoliosis or one shin bone longer than another that, which can cause a slight leg length discrepancy. This usually can be treated with a small shoe lift if necessary. The risk of this happening is very low. In preparation for the hip replacement, there are a few things you need to do to get the house ready. We would ask that you remove any clutter, loose throw rugs or cords that you could potentially trip on. You will also need a walker. If you don't have a walker already, please contact our office and we will get one for you. You can put all of your weight on the leg after the surgery, but you will need to use the walker for balance until you're cleared to go without it by your physical therapist. If you have a low toilet seat, you may want to get an elevated toilet seat to help you get up and down from the commode. Also, if you have concerns about being able to stand for a long time in the shower, you may want to get a shower chair which will allow you to sit while you're washing. An elevated toilet seat and shower chair can be found at most medical supply stores or online. A walker can be found at our office. Please contact us if you need assistance with getting any of this equipment. Physical therapy is an important part of your recovery after hip replacement surgery. We will have you do one to two preoperative physical therapy visits when the therapist will show you how to appropriately use the walker and do some home exercises that will help in your recovery. They'll also instruct you on how to do stairs after the surgery. Postoperatively, we will arrange for a physical therapist to come to your house and start working with you within 48 hours of your procedure. 
Typically, they'll come one to two times a week for about two weeks, and then you'll transition to outpatient physical therapy. Most people will use the walker for one to three weeks and then transition off of it as directed by their therapist. Prior to surgery, we would like for you to obtain medical clearance from your family doctor or cardiologist. Please have them send us a letter stating that you are healthy and safe enough to have the procedure. If you have not seen a dentist in the last six to 12 months, we would also ask that you see a dentist and make sure there is no evidence of dental infection. Sometimes if there's bacteria in the teeth or gums, this can get in the bloodstream and cause an infection in the new joint. It would be helpful to have the dentist send a letter of clearance also. After the surgery, we would ask that you do not drive until you're off the narcotic pain medicine. If it's your right hip that is being replaced, then you need to be walking with a safe, normal gait and have your normal reflexes before you return to driving. If you are working, we do not have a set day that you have to return back to work. On average, people will take off about a month, but you may ease back into activities as you feel safe and comfortable. Approximately two to three weeks prior to surgery, we will have you do some lab work. We will also ask that you meet with our anesthesiologist prior to surgery. They will go over the anesthesia procedure and what to expect on the day of the surgery. You should have a spinal anesthetic for the procedure. Most patients will be in the recovery room approximately two to three hours after surgery. We'll make sure that you're stable, that you're walking well, and that your pain is well controlled before we let you leave. It's important to have reasonable expectations for your hip replacement surgery. While the surgery does immediately get rid of the arthritis, it is normal to have some swelling and some discomfort afterwards. Your pain medication should control your pain and we'll make sure to send medicine in for you to the pharmacy of your choice prior to the surgery. The surgery does not make you 18 again. It is possible to still have some soreness in the soft tissues. Even though the arthritis is gone, you still have tendons and bursa which can occasionally become inflamed. We will be sending you additional videos shortly before your surgery and the day after your surgery that we would like for you to watch. Once again, it's important to us that you feel safe and comfortable throughout this process. If you have any additional questions or needs, please do not hesitate to contact us.